Hello everyone, I am Jitin and I am a part of Vide. This video is brought to you by Exams Vide. Exams Vide is a non profit initiative by the students of Triple DM Kanchipuram to give free coaching and resources to students preparing for national level competitive exams like NTSC. This is a math video covering the topic of direct and inverse variation. The contents of this chapter will be direct proportion, inverse proportion, unitary method and exams pertaining to each topic. First, let's see what is variation. If the values of two objects depends on each other such that the increase of one object will impact the increase of other object, then these two values are said to be in uh, variation. It is of two types, direct or indirect proportion or variation. You can call it proportion or variation. So let's see what is direct proportion. If the ratio of two objects x and y is a constant, which means that x is equal to k into y. So you can see that k is a constant. If you increase x, y will increase. And if you decrease x, y will decrease. So if the quantity of one object increases then the other will also increase then the two values are said to be in direct proportion you can see in many examples in daily life uh, if you take speed of any object as constant then if you increase the distance to travel then the time taken to travel will also increase this is a uh, very intuitive the number of articles purchased increases then the total cost also increases and also if the number of hours worked by some person will increase then his wages should also increase let's take an example for direct proportion the cost of 5 meters of a particular quality of cloth is 210 rupees tablet the cost for uh, 2, 4, 10 and 13 meters of the same type of cloth whenever you get a question on proportion First, try to identify whether it is direct proportion or indirect proportion. I have already told you what is direct proportion and we will talk about indirect proportion later. Um, but first, you need to identify it. Because it will not be given to you in the question whether it is direct or indirect proportion. If the cost, uh, if the cloth quantity will increase, then the uh, cost will increase. Similarly, if uh, you are purchasing less amount of cloth, then the price will decrease so it is clearly direct proportion and i told you earlier that uh, for direct proportion x by y equal to k where k is constant so x1 by y1 will be equal to x2 by y2 here we are taking x as uh, the length of cloth and y as the cost it is given to us that for 5 meters of cloth cost is 210 rupees so x1 is 5 and y1 is 210 you need to find the cost for uh, two, me 2 meters so your x2 will be equal to 2 meters and uh, y2 you need to find applying this formula 5 by 210 is equal to 2 by y2 just cross multiply them and you will get 2 into 210 by 5 is equal to y2 and simplify it you will get 84 so the cost will be 84 rupees Similarly, for second bit also, you need to find the cost for 4 meters of cloth. So, use uh, x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 or uh, I took here as x2 so you can take as 3. 5 by 210 which is equal to 4 by by 3. Uh, you simplify it, you will get uh, 168 rupees. Same by cross multiplication. Also, you might be getting the doubt that uh, can I use uh, 2 by 84 also as x1 by y1. Yes, you can uh, definitely do that and you will get the same answer. Let's take another example. We are given that a train is moving at uniform speed of 75 km per hour. How far will it travel in 20 minutes? And find the time required to cover a distance of 250 km. In this slide on direct proportion, I told you that a real life example of direct proportion is any object moving with constant speed if the speed is constant then distance by time is constant 
so it is like x by y is equal to k or you intuitively you can say that uh, if speed is constant the more distance you will travel the more time it will take here uniform speed also means the same thing constant speed so this is the case of direct proportion now that we have identified direct proportion let's uh, look at the tabular form one 75 kilometers per hour means 75 kilometers is traveled in uh, one hour one hour is 60 minutes so we are required how to find how far will it travel in uh, 20 minutes so time is 20 minutes we need to find the uh, distance like the previous example you can use x1 by x2 equal to y1 by y2 or x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 75 by 60 is equal to x by 20 same using the tabular form and cross multiply you will get x is equal to 75 into 20 by 60 that is uh, 75 by 3 25 so it will travel 25 kilometers similarly in the second example we need to find how much time will it uh, take to cover a distance of 250 kilometers here you are required to find distance in previous first trip and here you need to find the time uh, you can use x1 by y1 equal to x2 by y2 over here 75 by 60 will be equal to 50 by y and cross multiply you will get uh, 200 minutes uh, we need to find an hour so 200 by uh, convert 200 minutes into hours you will get 3 hours 20 minutes 3 hours will be 180 minutes 20 minutes will be left over so 3 hours 20 minutes you can do object to type questions in a much easier way you can see that the time is one uh, one third of this so distance will also be one third so it will be 25 uh, because that part is directly a simple multiple of this but it may not be the same in other cases so cross multiplying would be feasible sometimes let's move to the next slide okay now we'll see another type of proportion which is indirect proportion I told you there are two types of proportions, direct and indirect proportion. This is the second type, indirect proportion, or you can call it indirect variation. If two quantities may change such that if one quantity will increase, other will decrease, and vice versa. So if one quantity will decrease, other quantity will increase. This type of variation is called indirect proportion. Uh, the definition is that two quantities x and y are said to vary in inverse proportion if there exists a relation of the type x y is equal to k where k is a constant so if you take x1 y1 a pair in indirect proportion and another pair x2 y2 in indirect proportion then x1 y1 is equal to k and x2 y2 is equal to k so x1 y1 is equal to x2 y2 that is what you can see over here and both are equal to k if you transpose this then you will get x1 by x2 is equal to y2 by y1 in the previous case of direct proportion we had x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 but here x1 into y1 is equal to x2 y2 that is the difference yes you can see this in real life also in many places actually we will take one such example Suppose a school has budget of 6000 rupees on textbooks. The school can spend 6000 rupees fixed amount on textbooks. If price of each book is 40, then you divide it by 40, you will get 150 textbooks can be bought. If price of each book is increased, then number of books purchased, total number of textbooks purchased will decrease. So you can say there are an inept proportion and uh, price of each book into number of books is equal to 6000. We applied this formula x, y is equal to k. Now see over here, if I increase the textbook price to 50, then only 120 can be bought, again 60, 100 and so on. If you are increasing the price of each textbook, then the number of textbooks bought will decrease. You can clearly see that over here. So they are in near proportion. You can see many more examples of inverse proportion. Suppose you want to build a wall or tower and you have some workers and it will take some days for that. If you increase the number of workers, then the time taken will decrease. This is a case of inverse proportion and another example is you want to travel uh, to some place and the distance is fixed in one route suppose and if you go faster then it will take less time this is also a case of inverse proportion one is one quantity is uh, increasing and other is decreasing so let us look at the first example I told you 
If 15 workers can build a wall in 48 hours, how many workers will be required to do the same work in 30 hours? So let us uh, identify which type of proportion this is. As I told you, if uh, the number of workers will increase, then the time taken to do the work will decrease because you are getting more help to do the work. This is a case of indirect proportion. Like uh, right proportion, first let us write a table for this. In first row we are writing number of hours and second row we are writing number of workers. 48 hours, 15 workers and you need to do in 30 hours then how much, how many number of workers will be required. As I told you the formula for inverse proportion is x1 by 1 is equal to x2 by 2. Here x1 equal to 48 and x2 equal to 15. x2 is equal to 30 and you need to find y2. Then uh, do the cross multiplication 48 into 15 divided by 30, 15 to 30, 48 by 2 is 24. So 24 workers will be required. So observe that uh, here number of hours is decreasing. So you need more number of workers. And you, here you got the answer as 24 which is greater than 15. So it is logically correct. Well, let us move to another example. The second example says Six pipes are required to fill a tank in 1 hour 20 minutes. How long will it take if only 5 pipes are used? So here we are given that a tank is there and you are filling it with pipes through which water is coming. So first 6 pipes are there and it is taking uh, 1 hour 20 minutes. Only 5 pipes are used and you are reducing the number of pipes then the water coming will also decrease. So it will take more time to finish uh, filling the tank. So clearly this is an uh, example of indirect proportion. That is we did the first step identified which type of proportion it is. Now let us write the table. Number of pipes is 6 and it will take 1 or 20 minutes. 1 or 20 minutes is equal to 60 plus 20, 80 minutes. Then uh, you are given only 5 pipes. How much time will it take? So use the same formula for indirect proportion x1, x2, x1 by 1 is equal to x2 y2. So 6 into 80 is equal to 5 into y, then uh, find y 60, 6 into 80 by 5 which is uh, 96. So it will take 96 minutes which means 1 hour 36 minutes. So as I told you pipes will decrease, water will decrease then time taken will increase. Clearly time has increased. Now let us look at unitary method. We have already seen what is direct and indirect proportion. Uh, in unitary method also you will have two things and they, they will be related. The technique here is that first you find the value for one unit and then multiply it and calculate the for the required number of units. For simplification of this method, first write the things known on left hand side and the things to be calculated on right hand side. Uh, if we we'll take an example, it will be more clear to you. A shopkeeper sells 10 apples for 100 rupees. You want to purchase 6 apples, then what will be the cost? So you are, uh, you, you know the cost for 10 apples, which is 100 rupees, you need to find for 6 apples. So if number of apples will decrease, then the cost will also decrease. This is direct proportion, but we will not use the direct proportion formula. We will use unitary method over here. The unit here is apple. We need to find the cost for one apple. Then multiply it by six to find the cost for six apples. As I told you, first write the known thing on left hand side and unknown thing on right hand side. You know cost for 10 apples and which is 100 rupees. Then you need to find for one apple, but you don't know the cost. So write it on the right hand side. So for one apple, it will be 100 divided by 10. This 100 divided by 10, it is 10 rupees. So for one apple, it is 10 rupees. For six apples, you don't know how much. This on right hand side, multiplied by six, it is 60 rupees. We are, uh, carefully look how we are finding for one thing. Just multiply this into this and divide it by this. I hope you got it. One into 100 divided by 10, this is 10 rupees. Let us see another example. Now let us look at another example. A finishes a work in 15 days and B takes 10 days. How many days will the same work be done if they work together? 
we are given that a person A is there who will do a particular work in 15 days and another person B takes 10 days for the same work. If both of them work together to do the task, then how much time will it take? How many days will it take? We will solve this using unitary method. It is a very important example and you will find it in many places in many exams. So for person A, 50, in 15 days he can do one work. In one day, how much can he do? So the time is unknown. So the amount of work is unknown. So write it on the right hand side. And that time is known, so write on the left hand side. In one day, he can do 1 into 1 divided by 15, which is 1 by 15th of the work. Similarly, we will do for person B. In 10 days, he can do 1 work. In one day, how much can he do? 1 into 1 divided by 10, which is 1 by 10th of the work. When A and B work together, in one day, they can do 1 by 15 plus 1 by 10. Because both will work together, their work will add up. So 1 by 15 plus 1 by 10 which is 2 plus 3 by 30, 5 by 30 which is 1 by 6. Now just the way we wrote for A and B, write it for A plus B which means A and B are working together. So they can do 1 by 16th of the work in one day. To take one work how much time, to do one work how much time will it take? 1 into 1 divided by 1 by 6 which is 6 days. Uh, observe that here for A plus B, we know the work, but we need to find the number of days. So, unlike for A and B individual cases, we wrote the time on right hand side. So, we found out that the work will be done in 6 days if A and B work together. So, thank you for uh, watching these videos. Please check the description box for extra questions and lecture notes and PPT of this chapter. Thank you.